Okay, guys, let's start off. Good afternoon, and I hope you had uh, uh, the opportunity to go through what we discussed the other day. And today's class, it's extremely important that you participate in the class because uh, unlike the last class where we discussed certain important one word substitutes where there is a probability of some of those questions appearing in the exam, whatever we do discuss today, the questions are not important. What's important is the techniques that you develop and you need to carry these techniques with you. You got to internalize these techniques. And how do you develop these techniques? By participating. So I want everybody to participate today. There will be no right or wrong answers. So don't bother about whether your answers are right or wrong. Just type away, indicate to me your answers so that I know that you're all involved in this exercise. That is the only way to learn in today's class. The major takeaway from today's class is uh, developing of techniques. All right, now before we get into today's class, let's do a warm up with uh, certain one word substitutes that we discussed the other day. I'll also know whether you're awake or not. So let's discuss a few, I'll give you a few questions and let me see if you can answer those questions. Okay. Let's start off. A person who is insensible to kind thoughts or feelings, who is insensitive, who has insensitive disregard for others. What is the word for this? Feeling no sympathy for others. Could somebody answer this? Not somebody, everybody. Please type away. The question is, who is a person who is uh, kind of heartless, who is insensitive, who's got insensitive disregard for others and feelings? Yes, Shreya has got it right. Okay, anybody else? Others, I'm waiting for others. Not just one answer. Kiran Mai has got it right. Very nice. Yes, who else? I want everybody to participate today because today's class is all about participation. Yes, please go ahead and type away. I want to, yes, Zoom. Zoom to all participants. Um, who is Zoom? Who is Zoom? Can you identify yourself, Zoom? Yes, others. Grishma, that's right, Grishma. Lakshmi Priya, unresponsive. Uh -huh. I mean, I can say that uh, some students in today's class are unresponsive, but that's not the word I'm looking for, Lakshmi Priya. You've forgotten already what we've discussed in the last day's class. There is a specific word for what I'm looking at. Um, a person who is insensitive to others' feelings. Uh, he shows insensitive dis disregard for others, feels no sympathy for others. Yes. Where are the others? No response. I want to see others. Please answer. Okay. The answer to this question is callous. C-A-L-L-O-U-S. Some of you have got it right. Let's proceed. Let's try to, uh, uh, let, let me see if you can answer another question. A person whose only motive is to make money. A person who is, oh, whose only motive is to make money. Who is this guy? Let me have the answer to this question. A person whose only motive is to make money, who works for money, who plays for money, who wages a war for money. What do you call this person? Who is this person? In fact, uh, it is a noun as well as an adjective. All right. So can we, yeah, miserly, no, it's not miserly. Miserly is stingy. Miserly is stingy. Yes, Kiran Mai has got it, right? Yeah. Who else? Miserly means stingy. Can we have some other people responding, please? 
I want to I want to see everybody responding today. Shreya, where are you? Lakshmi Priya, where are you? Bhagirath Reddy, Sudan Shu, all the keyboard warriors from the other day. I want to see answers. Grishma. I want to see answers. A person is only motive is to make money who works for money. Stingy is not the answer. Stingy is again, same as miserly is not the answer. But good that you've participated. Okay, where are the others? You're not doing your homework. You have to do your homework. Only then it makes sense to attend these classes. I want to see some other answers. Where are the, where are the keyboard warriors from the other day? Yes, Harshit Varma has got it right. Good. Good afternoon, Harshit. Good to see you today. Lakshmi Priya has got it right. That's very nice. Anjali has got it right. Very nice. Okay, the answer is mercenary. Mercenary is the answer. Mercenary is a guy who does anything for money. Okay, a speech made without preparation. A speech made without preparation. Uh, offhand. Somebody just goes and makes a speech. What do you call that speech? What do you call that speech? A speech made without preparation. Uh, Lakshmi Priya, just check your spelling. You got it right. Srinivas Reddy, good afternoon. Uh, your spelling is wrong, but doesn't matter. That's what you meant. I know what you mean. So it's, uh, it's the right answer. Yes, others also, please wake up. Harshit got it right. Oh, uh, Anita. All right. So, um, impromptu, Shreya, impromptu is all right, but uh, I was looking for the word that I was discussing the other day. Impromptu is all right, but I was looking for a word that I was discussing. Kaveri, good afternoon. Good to see that you are there in the class today. All right. Kiranmai got it right. Okay, the answer is extempore. Answer is extempore. Anjali, extempore. Everybody has got it. Most of you have got it right. Okay, something which exists from birth. Something which exists from birth. What is the answer? Something which exists from birth. Belonging to or pertaining to an individual from birth. I gave some examples also. Yes. Can we have the answers, please? Is Suzan Shu there? I want you to answer. Mm, Srinivas, what is that? <laughs> Shreya, you got it wrong. <laughs> Shreya, you have to add, you have to check your spelling. Okay. You got to check your spelling, please. Shreya. Uh, Others, you want to work on whatever we do. Otherwise, you know, the, our memory is volatile. Whatever we do in a class, it's all, you know, it evaporates by the time we go to the next class. I told you 15 minutes exercise, say four times a day. You could have done it yesterday. All right. So anybody else who can give this answer? Nobody has given me a correct answer so far. Tara, I don't see Tara in the classes. She was very active in the first day. Where is she? Innate. Innate is something which is inborn, madam. Anjali, you obviously did not attend the class the other day. All right. You did not attend the class. That is why you're coming up with words which don't fit in here. Innate is something which is in, inborn, which is, which, is, which is there inside you. Now I'm talking about something which is, which is there right from birth. All right. So yes, Harshit has got it right. Harshit has got it right. Good Harshit. Okay. Harshit has got it right. Now let's give a chance for one more person to get it right. And then I'll proceed further. We are wasting time. Let's quickly, let's quickly get answers. Let's get answers quickly.
One more answer, please. Somebody else. Lakshmi Priya, the keyboard warrior from the other day. Where are you? What's the answer? Belonging or pertaining to an individual from birth. What is the answer? Okay, the answer is congenital. Like I said, congenital liar. Okay, right from birth. A congenital heart disease. That's what I was talking about. Okay. Uh, somebody who's new to anything, a beginner, somebody who's inexperienced. Uh, in fact, we discussed three words for this. Any word. I just, we discussed three words for this. Any word is all right. Anybody who's new to something, a beginner, inexperienced, novice. That's right. Uh, novice. Grishma has got it right. There are two other words. Anybody can give me other words, please. Novice. Grishma has got it right. Yes, Kiranmai has got it right. Tyro is another word and neophyte is another word. Good. I'm very happy that you people could answer. Okay, we also discussed an antonym, neophyte. That's right, Shreya. Uh, you are awake. That's good. Um, uh, we also discussed an antonym of uh, novice. We also discussed an antonym of novice, a person who's experienced. Uh, could somebody tell me what this word is? A person who's experienced, all right? One who has grown old or had long experience in service or occupation, which is an antonym of the three words that we discussed just now. What is the word? Quickly, quickly, quickly. Veteran, Kiran Mai has got it right. Good Kiran Mai, glad that you are doing a good job of following what I said. Okay, we also discussed uh, Omnipresent, that means somebody being present everywhere. I discussed the specific word for omnipresent. Another word for omnipresent. What is that? I also discussed another word for omnipresent. What is that? Could somebody tell me the answer? Omnipresent being, means being present everywhere. All right. So we, we said, you know, Smartphones are omnipresent and we, yes, Lakshmi Priya has got it right, though the spelling is not right, but it's okay. Anjali has got it right. That's also nice. Okay. That's also nice. Anybody else can answer this question? Sudhanshu has not started. Srinivas Reddy has not started. Bhagirat Reddy has not started if they are still present. Sri Vatsava. That's very nice, Sri Vatsava. Good afternoon and welcome to the class. Good. Keep participating today. All right. Srivali. Very nice, Srivali. Bhagirath Reddy. Oh, Bhagirath Reddy, you didn't get it right. Mm, just check what you've written. <clears throat> okay. The answer that I was looking for is ubiquitous. U B I Q U I T O U S. Okay, that said, let's move on to today's class. We don't have too much time. The class is very loaded. So we are going to discuss the sequencing questions today. And I want everybody to participate, everybody to give answers to every question that we discuss. This is the only way to learn today. There is no bhashan that I'm going to give, a lengthy monologue. Don't expect that from me. I'm not going to give any of those things. You got to participate along with me in answering the questions today. So there are three kinds of sequencing questions that we are going to encounter in the BITSAT exam. The first one is jumbled letters. So what do you do here in jumbled letters? In jumbled letters, in jumbled letters, you've got letters, okay, which are jumbled. And what you need to do is try to make sense out of it. Let's look at the first one, which is a very simple one, which we discussed the other day, which is, uh, which is what? Okay, which is a fruit. The first one is fruit. I don't have to tell you what it is. The only technique here is that you need to look at uh, the, uh, what do you say, the options first. You need to look at the options first and then move on to the answer. So don't try to sequence uh, don't try to sequence the uh, given letters yourself because it is a tremendous waste of time. 
so that's what it is so the first one is a fruit it's not a very difficult one okay now let's look at the second one let's look at the second question so what are we going to do second question what is the option there okay we have h there h a this is h okay one minute Okay, uh, second one. Second one, we have H here. Okay, then A, then 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 H A. Four is S. That's all right. Then five is T. That's also all right. Then three is E. Haste. Okay, but there's one more word, and that is C. So it doesn't make sense. Let's look at the second one. Let's look at the second one what does the second one say yeah the second one is chaste chaste means pure formal this is chaste this is the right answer chaste is pure and formal okay chaste is pure and formal like for example uh, when he was stopped at the gate by the security guy the hyderabadi abused in abused him in chaste hyderabadi hindi so pure and simple so that is what is that is what chaste is so this is what it is c h a s t e that is chaste okay so let's move on the next one the next one is Yeah, who's the next one? I'm looking at the third question. The third question, what do we have? There is a mistake in the third question. So let me correct the mistake. This is not C. This is not C. This is G. All right. So that is not C. That is G. And the first option starts with one. So the first option starts with one. One, three, two, five, four, six. Okay. One, three, two, five, four, six. What is the answer? What is the answer? What is the answer? After the correction, please wait for the correction. There is a correction there in the third one. There's a pretty simple one. All right. What is the answer? Okay. Everybody has got it right. Uh, Srivalli, why is it B, madam? B is, uh, B if you see, it is uh, G -A, G -A T. There itself you have to stop. Don't proceed further. B has G A T. Okay, stop. It doesn't make sense. Okay, don't proceed further. All right. So what is the word? So many of you have got it right. What is the word? The word is magnet. Ramdas Jyoti. Jyoti, welcome today. Please respond. Please keep responding. All right. So the answer is. Is that Venkatesh? Avanaganti Venkatesh. Anita, that's right. Anita, you got it right. Answer is D. Okay, so the answer is a magnet. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's look at the fourth one. So far, we've got very easy ones. Let's look at the fourth one. Okay, so the fourth one, if you see, the first option, N A R C O T. T, so far it is fine. And uh, there uh, you are uh, stuck. That doesn't make sense. Then the second option is R O T C A. That makes sense. Then move on. And what do you get? What do you get? Okay. The third uh, option C is uh, carton. C A R. T O N. What's a carton? Carton is a box. What's a carton? Carton is a box. Okay. So several of you have got it right. So that that seems okay. Let's go on. The next one. Fifth one. Let's go on. Fifth one. Now that's lit, that's little difficult. It's not easy. Okay. This is a word which 
maybe you're not familiar with. So you may have difficulty in answering this question, but let's try to answer this question. Harshit has answered it. Shashank has answered it. The fifth one. So if you look at the first option, the first option says uh, G-A-I-N-E-M. G-A-I-N-E-M. That makes sense. What's the second one? Jyoti has got it right. The second one. The second one is uh, E N I. G M A. That's right. That's the word we are talking about. So it is enigma. It is enigma. Okay. So what does that mean? Enigma is a mystery or difficult to understand. Puzzle. He is an enigma to me. I can't understand him. That means I can't understand. He's a kind of a mystery to me. Enigma. All right. Enigma is something very difficult to understand or uh, uh, something which is mysterious. Somebody who's mysterious or it's puzzle. Okay, so that is an enigma. Okay, so that's another word that we came across today. Enigma. Okay, so that is enigma. Okay, let's go on. Let's look at the sixth one. Sixth one, what are we looking at? Sixth one, that's very simple. Not very difficult. A lot of people have answered, Anita has answered, Lakshmi Priya has answered, Kaveri has answered, Bhagirath has answered, Anita has answered, Shreya, Harshi, Jyoti, you not got it right. Jyoti, you got to relook at it. Okay, I'm looking at the sixth one. I'm looking at the sixth one. Okay, so yes, Jyoti, you got it right now. Yes, answer is C, which means friend. Okay, that's, that's cool. That's not very difficult. That's not very difficult. Let's, let's go on. Okay, let's look at the seventh one. Let's look at the seventh one. What is this? Seventh one. Seventh one, what is the answer? Not an easy one. What is the answer? What is the answer? Like, for example, you start off with uh, the first option. The first option is C, A, uh, this one. I'm talking about this. So C, A, T, cat, but what do you get? You, 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 very difficult to get a word after that. So you can stop there. B, uh, one, K, A, C, you can stop there. Okay. And then you have C. Okay. So we were at, uh, we were at seventh. Okay, so let me just increase the size of this. Okay, we're good today. Right. Okay, now so we're looking at seventh. Uh, can we have the answers, please? Uh, we were looking at uh, seventh one. The answer is uh, tackle. T A C K L E. So, answer here in this particular case is D. Okay, answer is D. Okay, so that is the answer. Uh, some of you have got it right. Okay, let's move on to the eighth one. Eighth one is very, very easy. A lot of people are responding. Good. Sri Vatsava has got it right. Lakshmi Priya has got it right. Sishank has got it right. Srinivas Reddy has got it right. Yes, Harshita has got it right. And so simple. All right. So the answer is, eighth one, the answer is sugar. And that is the third option. That's the third option. Okay. Let's move on. Ninth one. I think you can you can see straight away. Yes, that's a straightforward answer. That's no difficult. Shashank has got it right. Shashank Srivatsava has got it right. Yes, Kaveri has got it right. It's the answer is uh, B and it is muzzle. Okay. Let's go on. Um, the next one. The next one is also very simple. Can we have the next one, please? Tenth one. Yes, Seshank has got it right. Seshank is on fire today. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Everybody is answering. Chalo. Kaveri. Anita. Good. Good. Srivatsava. Good. Answer is, uh, answer is a B and it stands for brunch. Okay, the 11th one. Let's go on with the 11th one. 11th one. What's the answer? 
Eleventh one answer. Yes, Anaga has answered. Anaga, welcome Anaga for participating today. You have started with uh, the right answer. Answer is uh, A, Gamble. Bhagirath Reddy has got it. Yes, A. All right, let's go on. Grishma, you got it right. Good. Let's go on. Twelfth. Twelfth. What's the twelfth one? Twelfth one. What's the twelfth one? The first option says R A O U. So you can stop there. R A O U. Does make sense? The second one doesn't make sense. The third one doesn't make sense. The answer is four. Answer is author. Okay. Thirteenth is something which everybody will get. Thirteenth is something which everybody will get. Let's see. Let's see the answer for the thirteenth. Thirteenth. I'm looking at thirteenth. Yes, Sashank. You got it right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thirteenth. Okay. Thirteenth is C. Thirteenth is C, and that is mental. I'm sure that's an easy one to catch. Fourteenth. Let's look at fourteenth. Fourteenth is not easy. Fourteenth is not a common word. Let's see how you get fourteenth. Fourteenth. If you start with uh, A, it says uh, R A K H. You can start there. Sixth. Uh, I mean, if you look at B, it says N A K. Uh, H, you can stop there. Then uh, third one. Uh, third starts with H, A, N, K, E, R. Makes sense. Hanker. Okay, that's a new word we are coming across today. Hanker means have a strong desire for something. Hanker is a strong having a strong desire for something. Kaveri has got it right. Shashank has got it right. Anita has got it right. Hanker. His hanker for power is well known. Hanker means having a strong desire for something. Okay, 15th. Let's look at 15th. Okay, 15th is again a simple one. Let's look at 15th. Yes, Shashank has got it right. 15th. Bhagirath has got it right. Kaveri has got it right. 15th is simple. Answer is signal. All right. So, okay, we'll stop here as far as this uh, uh, jumbled letters are concerned. What we need to do is the only technique is look at the options, look at option A, try to see whether it makes sense. Go to B, go to C, go to D. Trial and error. That is the only way to answer. But you need to be quick and you're familiar with words, more familiar with words, it will be easier for you to answer. We don't have, we are running out of time. What we will do is we will stop the jumbled letters here. We'll quickly move on to the second type of question and that is, that is the uh, jumbled words. That means a particular sentence is broken up into segments and the segments are not in a sequence. What you need to do is uh, sequence the segments so that they form a coherent sentence. So here the first one, look at the first one and let me see what we can do. Uh, Srivatsava and others, we've all moved from there. Anita, we've all moved from jumbled letters. So let's look at uh, the jumbled words to form a particular sentence. So how do we do it? Let's look at the first option here. The first option says it starts with R. R states, did he realize? Okay, then little, I mean, we are starting with little. Little is the first part of the sentence that's already given. Little did he realize, makes sense. There itself, you can find that it makes sense. Little did he realize that he had been let down by a colleague whom he had stood by all these years. Bingo. So we hit the jackpot with the first option itself. Sometimes you are very lucky and you'll get the answer. So answer is A, RPSQ. Little did he realize that he had been let down by a colleague whom he had stood by all these years. So again, the technique here is to go option by option. All right. And uh, try to make sense out of it. Now let's see how this evolves. Let's look at the second one. Second one, there was, and Q, what does it say? A time when each family, all right, makes sense. There was a time when each family, 
are for itself most of the things it doesn't make sense so you can abandon it there let's go to b there was for itself most of the things so this is wrong this is wrong let's look at c there was a time there was for itself most of it this is also wrong so by elimination we've got the answer here sashank you didn't get it right there was a time when each family actually produced for itself most of the things it needed for its everyday life okay so it has to be its here there's a small correction here that has to be its for its everyday life okay let's go on to third one let's go on to third one okay how do we do the third one then and then you start with s then how eminently it struck me doesn't make sense so just abandon it then then of course uh, how eminently does make sense so a is wrong b is wrong let's look at uh, c what does it say then it struck me makes sense how eminently suitable it was of course so answer is uh, uh, c and how many of you got right chanda anita has got right Shashank has got right. Shinwas Reddy has got it right. Okay, let's move on to fourth one. Let's go on to fourth one. Okay, let's try to answer this question. Fourth one, could somebody answer the fourth one? I'll give you a couple of seconds. Bhagirath Reddy has answered, but may not be right. Bhagirath may not be right. Grishma got it right. Kaveri has got it right. Kaveri has got it right. Let's see the others. Where are the others? Anaga has got it right. Okay. Where are the others? Okay. The grocer, what did the grocer do? The grocer, start with P, did not listen to the protests of customers. That makes sense. Um, R, whom he had cheated, also makes sense. Uh, who was in the uh, with great audacity? Whom he had cheated with great audacity? Who was in the habit of no? That is not correct. Who was in the habit of weighing? So the habit of weighing applies to the grocer. So obviously you should look at uh, a sequence starting with Q. You should look at a sequence starting with Q. So the choice is between B and C. So D can easily be eliminated. The choice is between B and C. The grocer. Let's look at B. The grocer. Who was in the habit of weighing with great audacity somehow it doesn't gel well there so if you look at c so a is not right b is not right let's look at c the grocer who was in the habit of weighing did not listen to the protests of customers weighing less actually the the grocer who was in the habit of weighing less did not listen to the protests of customers whom he had cheated makes sense with great audacity so rs so whom he had cheated with great audacity what is audacity audacity means boldness bold or arrogant disregard for normal restraints he had the audacity to defy the principle all right or the, he had the audacity to defy his boss all right so boldness arrogant disregard for rules and what is expected of people so that is what that is what is the meaning of the word audacity okay so the answer is therefore c and most of you have got it right let's look at the fifth one let's look at the fifth one though he dialed frequently though he dialed frequently then what though he dialed frequently okay q my brother could not contact me on telephone also makes sense and had left no information oh that doesn't gel so qp is seems to be all right now you'll have to see what comes next though he died so this is not okay but qp is okay so we have to continue where qp is there qp is here so let's look at this though he died frequently my brother could not contact me on telephone as i had gone out of office and i had left no information makes sense 
So a lot of you have got it right. Harshita uh, uh, Avanaganti, Lakshmi Priya, Srinivas Reddy, Bhagirath Reddy, everybody has got it right. Let's go on to sixth one. Let's go on to sixth one. Education is what? Education is what? Let's start with uh, A. For the development, is for the development. The first need, no, doesn't gel, so throw it away. Okay, let's go on with uh, uh, education is the first need, all right, for the development, all right, in a citizen of the proper sense of responsibilities. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? Education is the first need for the development in a citizen. Oh, I mean, it's so convoluted. Let's look at uh, C. What does C say? Education is the first need for the development of the proper sense of responsibilities in a citizen. Perfect. So answer is C. A lot of you have got C. Okay, seventh one. It was, okay, let us see. It was what? It was, it starts with A. It was A in the direction of new house as I worked sedately. Doesn't make sense, throw it out. Let's look at uh, B. Uh, it was, uh, let's see, some of you have got it right, some of you have got it wrong. It was, a soft summer evening makes sense. As I walked sedately, okay, let's see where it goes. In keeping with my mood. Mm. Okay, let's look at this. It was a soft summer evening in keeping with my mood. A soft summer evening in keeping with my mood. That's fine. As I walked sedately in the direction. So that is cool, that's the answer. See, as I walk sedately in the direction of news, they have to go together. RS have to go together. Please remember that. RS have to go together. And it goes together only in C. That is the clinch to search for a clincher. And once you get the clincher, your search is over. And then we will see in the next uh, uh, second sentence sequencing, this association is very important. Two segments go together always. And uh, uh, you have to look at that uh, association where two segments get associated. They go together. So this is a perfect example of association. By the way, we have come across a word sedately. What is the meaning of the word sedate? Sedate means calm, quiet, Serene, sedately is calm, quiet, serene. So that is the meaning of the word sedately. Let's go on to eighth one. Eighth one, let's see the answers. Eighth one, let's see the answer. The paper setter seems to have a bias for the option C. Most of the answers are C. Will this also be C? Let's look at it. With her body dragging her unfilling feet doesn't make sense with her body we can so this is not infirming there's no word like infirming sorry make that correction it is infirm infirm means weak infirm means physically weak frail feeble all of these things mean infirm infirm means uh, not firm or strong infirm means not firm or strong feeble shaky frail that is the meaning of the word uh, infirm so what is the answer to this question? Okay, what is the answer to this question? Eighth one, don't go to the ninth one, Anita. We are still on the eighth one. Wait, 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 hang on. Let's finish off the eighth one. With her body, we are looking at option C. Double with age, okay, we can infirm dragging her unwilling feet. She persisted on our mission, so this Okay, this seems to be all right. So here, what you need to see is that we can infirm double with age. So both of these things go together. So 
R and Q go together. So you got to look at those options where R and Q go together and there's only one option and that is option C. So that is the clincher. So answer C. Now let's look at the ninth one. Let's look at the ninth one. Okay. When he, let's look at A, when he heard the hue and cry, hue and cry is a lot of noise. When he heard the hue and cry at midnight, then what happened? He was nervous and did not know what to do. Bingo, we got the first one hitting the jackpot. Sometimes you may be lucky, you, A may be the answer, so you don't have to search for the other ones. So answer is A, ninth is A. Let's look at the 10th one. Let's look at the 10th one. A French woman, okay, 10th one. A French woman, what happened to her? A French woman, okay, 10th one. What is the answer for the 10th one? Lakshmi Priya has given some answer. Let's see that. A French woman, what happened to her? Let's look at P. Uh, let's look at A. A French woman committed suicide. That's nice. Who had come to Calcutta? This doesn't gel, so throw it out of the window. Next one. Mm -hmm. Shashank has got it right. Srivastava has got it right. Grishma has got it right. Kaveri has got it right. Let's see. A French woman, where she had put up? Oh, doesn't make sense. So that is out of the window. Then uh, we are coming to the favorite option of the paper setter, which is C. Is C the answer? Is C going to be the answer for this question? Let's see. A French woman, okay, who had come to Calcutta, makes sense. Committed suicide, makes sense. S, by jumping from the first floor balcony of the hotel, that's also, that also makes sense, where she had put up. That means where put up, okay. We are coming up with a phrasal verb. We discussed the phrasal verbs in the first uh, class. We said phrasal verbs is part is part of the Bitsat syllabus, where we said a phrasal verb con contains a verb with a preposition, an adverb, etc., etc. So put up is a perfect example of a phrasal verb. In this context, put up means uh, where she is staying. Put up means where she is staying. So answer here is RPSQ. Put up also has got other meanings. Put up, for example, means tolerator. I have to put up with this guy for the next two weeks because I'm stuck because of the lockdown. Put up means tolerate, also means tolerate. Put up also means to, 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 to present. Uh, I expect you to put up a fight, okay? So put up has a lot of meanings, a phrasal verb has, may have more than one meaning and you want to look at the context and uh, to see what the meaning is. In this particular context, put up means to stay. So answer is A. So we are running out of time today. We will go to the next section. Um, so far we have seen two types of sequencing. One is jumbled letters, the other is jumbled words. Now we look at jumbled sentences. So let's quickly go on to jumbled sentences. And the techniques that we develop in jumbled sentences, we will use for all sequencing questions. Okay, so let's look at uh, jumbled uh, sentences. So <clears throat> let's try to answer this question. Okay, um, these uh, sentences are tough. Let me tell you that these sentences are tough, but it doesn't matter. Um, we will try to answer those questions. Let's take a couple of minutes in terms of understanding this particular um, sequence of sentences. You have five sentences here and you've got four options, each presenting a different group of, grouping of the sentences. Okay, so let's start with the first one. The first one says B-A-E-D-C. Okay, the first one is B A. -E E D C. Okay, so what does it say? B. Success, the kind where you work really hard and riches follow, is a concept that seems to have died with internet startups, etc., etc. Seems to be okay. Like, let's go on to A. 
Some would say it is a smart career move. Now this is out of place. What does that it refer to? Therefore, BA doesn't make sense and you have to abandon it there itself. Just abandon it. Okay, let's go on to D. What does D say? Uh, what does 2 say? 2 says, D, she knows there is no success like failure, sang Bob Dylan, long before celebrity calamity became all the rage. What is calamity? Calamity means a disaster. Calamity means disaster or accident or a bad event causing damage or suffering. So calamity is a disaster. So she knows there is no success like failure, sang Bob Dylan long before celebrity calamity became all the rage. Then what do you have? Thomas Watson, the founder of IBM, must have also had an inkling. Inkling means uh, knowing something, okay? Inkling means knowing something. So Thomas Watson, the founder of IBM, must have also had an inkling too when he wrote, now two, that shows that uh, these two go together. Two, when he wrote, if you want to increase your success rate, double your failure rate. So what we are talking about is, you need to fail first to succeed. That is what D and E tell us. So D and E are associated. So the clincher in this sequence of uh, sentences is association. We discussed one other technique in the first day where we said you have to use anchoring. Anchoring means identify the starting sentence. Here we are encountering the second technique. The second technique is called association. Association. Two words, uh, two sentences go together and you got to search for those options where these two sentences go together. In this particular case, in the second option, uh, D, E are associated. There is uh, no other sequence where D, E uh, go together and therefore the answer is two. Let's look at the other sentences in this sequence. Uh, so Bob Dylan said something, Thomas Watson said something, and then what happened? Success, the kind where you really work, where you work really hard and riches follow is a concept that seems to have died, etc., 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 etc. Then you have C. Even a prison sentence is hardly a hindrance. What's a hindrance? Hindrance means obstacle. Hindrance means obstacle. So you have D, E, B, C. Okay, so if you want to make it to the very top today, you have to first fall flat on your face. Even a prison sentence is hardly a hindrance. And then, and then what do you have? And then after C, you have A. Some would say it is a smart career move. It, okay, it referring to the the obstacle that you're going to face. So D, E, B, C, A makes sense, all right? So that is the right sequence that we are looking. Admittedly, this had a very tough set of sentences, but don't get disheartened. Let's go on and let's look at the second question. The second question, the sentences are long, but you can answer it easily. Can you answer this question? Please try to answer this question. You also have to tell me what is the technique that you have used to answer this question. Okay, this is an easy question. Sentences are long, take your time, but answer this question. Let's see how you will answer this question. It's, a, it's based on a very, very simple technique. Let me have the answers. Where are the answers? To mm, Grishma has answered, but Grishma, please look again. Mm. See, uh, 
if you look at B, if you look at the sentence B, Grishma, it says in the context of the assembly elections, while the BSP recognizes that it has a modest base among Dalits, it is particularly trying to widen its constituency in Madhya Pradesh where it has made inroads. And see, in the context of the assembly elections, he is referring to while the BSP, let's look at that, the BSP. So he might have already referred to BSP somewhere else. So B cannot be a starting sentence. B cannot be a starting sentence. Okay, so that can't be an answer. Could somebody else try? Okay. Bhagirath, if you look at Bhagirath, just let's try to answer this smartly Bhagirath. A, uh, the first option starts with A. First option starts with A. What does the A say? A product of Dalit assertion in the Northern Plains, its emergence. Are you by where is it? See, in the paragraph, it should have been mentioned somewhere, right? So it, A cannot be the starting sentence because there should be a sentence preceding this where he tells us what it refers to. Therefore, Bhagirath, uh, first one cannot be the answer. A cannot be a starting sentence. So we know A cannot be a starting sentence. B cannot be a starting sentence. What can be a starting sentence? What can be a starting sentence? So this is not the answer. This is not the answer. This is not the answer. By elimination, we have arrived at this one. All right. So what does it say? It starts with C. The BSC is more than, uh, the BSP is more than merely a state level party. Ideal starting sentence, okay? It starts with this. Then what does it say? A, a product of Dalit assertion in the Northern Plains, its emergency. It means what? BSP, he's talking about BSP. So it is perfectly defined in the preceding sentence. So C and A go together. Then B, in the context of assembly elections, while the BSP recognizes all that nonsense comes there, C, A, B makes sense. And then D, the party intends to use its base in the northern states as a stepping stone to become a player at the central level. So C, A, B, D, that is where the sequence uh, proceeds and answer therefore is two. So in this particular case, what is the technique that we used? The technique that we used is anchoring, where we started the first, we identified the first sentence to start the sequence. All right. Okay. Here we're coming across a phrase, stepping stone. Stepping stone means what? Stepping stone means a means of progress or advancement, a means of progress or advancement. Also, we have looked at a particular word here, modest. Modest means uh, something which is uh, not very large. Modest also means uh, humble. Modest also means humble. We have one more word here, imperative. Imperative means something which is necessary, something which is important and urgent. That is imperative. Imperative means something which is necessary. So these are shed. What is the meaning of the word shed? See, as I told you, Hindi, English is a funny language. Same word has different meanings. Uh, shed, you know, a shed, a loco shed, for example. It is a noun, but here shed is a verb. Okay, so what does shed mean here? Shed means give up, giving up. Okay, uh, alliances and shed their images. So they have to shed their image, that they have to give up their image. So that is how shed is used here. Okay, so let's, uh, let me tell you, you need to have patience. These, word, these sentences are tough. Uh, always sentence sequencing, these sentences needn't be as tough as what we are seeing today. But once you get used to these easy, uh, the, the, the tough sentences, when you are given the easy sentences, the answers will be easy. So let's look at the third one. Okay, third one. Okay, third one. Okay, so correspondingly, let's see. Please answer the third one. Somebody, 
please answer the third one. Let me have the answer to the third one. So I'm not just interested in the answer. I'm also interested in what is the technique that you have used to answer this. Okay. Try to answer this. Lakshmi Priya has already answered. Lakshmi Priya, you have to look at your answer. Srinivas Reddy has answered. Okay, let's see. Let's give some more time to everybody. Kiran Mai has answered and got it right. Shashank has answered and got... No, he's not answered. Ah, Shashank has got it right. Shashank has got it right. Okay, Shreya... Madam, you have to look at your answer. Okay. Now here is <clears throat> a doctrine. What is a doctrine? Doctrine means a stated principle, a stated principle of government policy. Okay. Like here, a nuclear doctrine. All right. Stated principle of government policy. So doctrine, that is the meaning of the word doctrine. Punitive. Punitive means inflicting punishment inflict punishment on somebody that is punitive deterrence i saw deterrence somewhere there this is deterrence okay my pen is my stylus is not working anyway deterrence deterrence um Deterrence means, you know, discourage an action through fear of consequences. You scare the fellow so much that he will not act. Okay. So that is deterrence. Okay. Let's try to answer this question quickly. If you look at the answers, uh, the first one starts with C. India's defensive no first use strategy implies that its, that its nuclear weapons do not have to be maintained at hair trigger alert. No problem with However, what a defensive policy. However, what a defensive policy does imply is that in the event deterrence fails, the country's nuclear weapon systems must have the survivability and effectiveness for a rapid punitive response. Okay, but that, however, is out of place. Uh, um, okay, from C, it doesn't make it, uh, it B it doesn't follow immediately. So we can stop there. Let's look at two. Two starts with. The nuclear command system or structure in any country must harmonize with its nuclear strategy and doctrine. I would say this is an ideal opening sentence because he is making a sweeping generalization and he is establishing a principle. So this has to be the starting sentence of the sequencer. It has got all the qualities for be being the starting sentence of that particular sequence. So therefore, the choice is actually between two and four, because in the 
Sec, uh, in the option D, in the sentence D, he says the nuclear command system or structure in any country must harmonize. Must harmonize means be in sync with, with its nuclear stra strategy and doctrine. And uh, therefore, uh, I made a mistake. It should not be, it should be either two or four. It should be either two or four. I'm not striking out. It should be either two or four because uh, both of them start with D. Then it says India's defensive. He makes a general principle which can be used for all countries. Then it comes to specific case of India. Therefore, C has to follow D. C cannot come before D. C has to follow D. We are making a general principle now first in, 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 in D and then we are talking about India's case. Uh, so therefore, C has to follow D. Therefore, C cannot be a opening sentence. Some of you have got three as the right answer. Three is not the right answer for this reason. So you start with the D, then you go with C and then you will see that other sentences correspondingly, this also means it is unnecessary to delegate powers. What is delegate power? Delegate means to entrust to somebody else, to entrust responsibility to somebody else. That is delegate. What is embrace? Embrace means to include or contain. Embrace. Embrace also means to hug somebody. But here, here what we are talking about, embrace means to include something. Okay. To include, to be a part of. Okay. And uh, if you proceed, then uh, if you proceed on these lines, you have D, C, A, B, and E. And E finally talks about this raises the obvious question. What is the alternative chain of command? And what does this, e, e, this refer to? However, what a defensive policy does imply is that in the event uh, deterrence fails, the country's nuclear weapon system must have the survivability and effectiveness for a rapid punitive response. This raises the obvious question. So B and E go together. So the entire sequence can be answered on the basis of two uh, techniques. One is identifying the opening sentence. The opening sentence is D and then looking at a BE which go together. And we will conclude today's session with the last question. This is an easy question. Uh, most of your questions will be like this. They will not be like one, two and three. Please try to answer this. This is an easy one. We've got just one minute to answer this. We are running out of time. Okay. Please try to answer this. And how do you answer this? What is the technique? We've just got one minute to answer this. And how do you answer this? Ravages means destructive effects of something. Ravages destructive effects of something ravages all right shreya has answered it shashank has answered it but shreya b cannot be the opening sentence if you see c is a very general statement anyone concerned with academic standards of Indian universities cannot but feel unhappy at the ravages wrought by the system of affiliation which, with which we started in 1857. Ideal opening sentence. Then we have the first three universities in India were modeled on the University of London. C, B, A, when these were established, these means what? Bombay, Calcutta and Madras. So B and A go together. B and A go together. And then D, ironically enough, London University abandoned that model in 1858, but we are still stuck with it. Ideal closing sentence. So ideal opening sentence is C, ideal closing sentence is D, and B and A go together. So all the options going for two. So answer is C, B, A, D. Okay, so that is the answer. We will stop with this today. We are running out of time. And uh, what I want you to do is please finish off exercise one. Please finish off exercise one next class and please also finish off the questions that we have not answered in the previous two sections. Please try to finish off. We will discuss the answers in the next class. Also next class, we're going to take up idioms and phrases and all the guys who want 
the uh, material please note this number correctly because you people are sending the uh, whatsapp to the wrong number the right number is 70938 please note down 70938 20595 20595 70938 20595 70938 20595 please send a whatsapp okay for material for material please send whatsapp don't send to any other number 70938205955 if you send a whatsapp to this number you will get the material for the next class and the next class material uh, is not there in the book that I had supplied. So there is an addendum to that book. So I think everybody needs this material. Please send a WhatsApp to that number 70938 We discussed, we introduced sentence sequencing today. Sentence sequencing has a lot of other stuff also. You need practice. Admittedly, today the sentences were a little tough. So it takes a little time for you to develop this. But with a little practice, you will be able to do better. So complete the practice, complete the assignment that we have given. You have time, you have tomorrow, you have day after. We're going to meet again on Monday. So you've got two days. So you've got sufficient time to do this exercise. Have a good day. See you again on Monday. Santosh, you can close the class now.